Uh, I'm assuming that because you watch me on YouTube, you also watch other people in the finance industry on YouTube, and everybody's saying that we're going to fall into another recession. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my opinions about recessions, as well as how you can implement market sentiment into where you think the price is going to go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Artie, and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable on a consistent basis. So a lot of you guys have been on different forums and different communities, and you hear the term, the market sentiment, whether people think the price is bullish or bearish, but you don't really understand how you can actually use that, where to actually find what the market sentiment is is and how a negative bearish market sentiment can cause a cascading effect in the market. So just to get the day trading stuff out of the way, let's jump on the computer. Okay, so what you can do is go to google.com, my number one source of all knowledge on the internet, and type in market sentiment outlook, my FX book. First link right here is gonna be Forex sentiment on my FX book. Uh, there's gonna be a link to it in the description of this video. Right here, you can see the market sentiment on every single Forex pair. So on Euro USD, you can see that there are more bullish people than there are bearish people. That's the market sentiment, the people's opinion on whether the price is gonna go up or down, whether they're bullish or bearish on it. Also, for example, USD JPY, a lot of people are very bearish on USD JPY. You can look up every single currency pair that you're trading. You can also go to this website, Daily FX, and it will show you the outlooks on gold, silver, oil, US 500, German 40, and it'll give you a general idea as a confluence to what you're already thinking. So if you're already bullish on US 30 and you're going in for a buy position that day, you can just reference this and see, oh wait, more people are bearish on US 30 right now, so maybe I should contemplate my decision, or yes, yeah, 70% are bullish just like me, so I'm gonna get into my position. What I want you to understand is that there's resources for you to understand what the market is thinking. I will link a bunch of them down below. All of them are useful. And if you guys are still unclear on what market sentiment is, market sentiment refers to the overall attitude of investors towards a particular security or financial market. It is the feeling or tone of a market or its crowd psychology as revealed through the activity and price movement of the securities traded in that market. In broad terms, rising price indicates bullish market sentiment, while falling price indicates bearish market sentiment. Investopedia, a wealth of knowledge. I've gotta find some paper. You guys have probably seen this before. This is what we call a vicious cycle. When one thing happens, it causes the other thing to happen, which causes the other thing to happen, and it just keeps going in this circle. So I wanna explain my opinions and thoughts on market sentiment and what's going on with the markets and how they keep dropping, because right now, the vicious cycle is happening. If you guys have seen the price of cryptocurrencies and how they keep dropping and how the US stock market keeps dropping and how Facebook tanked and all of these things just keep tanking. And I wanna explain what's going on with the market because the market sentiment is driving that downwards movement. When anybody has extra money or they wanna start investing, what they're gonna start doing is investing into stocks like Amazon and Tesla and Facebook, or just an overall ETF like the Vanguard Fund where you know, you're know you pretty much gonna get about eight to 9% annually. People invest in those things thinking that the price is going to go up. But then as the market starts coming down, people see their portfolios decreasing in value causing them to pull money out. It's basically a sell. So the more sell orders and the more fear that happens, the further the price starts cascading down. Now, some of you have the buy the dip mentality, but a lot of people just stay afraid until the market starts swinging back up and then they get in again. What these investors are doing is pulling their money out of these high risk investments like Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
Facebook, whatever, because they're starting to lose money. And what they're doing is they're pulling their money out of these things and putting them into lower risk, higher yield bonds, treasury bonds to be exact. While the market is going up, not many people are putting their money into treasury bonds because they yield a lower percentage than these higher risk assets. But as these higher risk assets start falling, people start putting their money into here because even though it's a lower yield, it's still making more money than these things that are falling. Now, as that happens, the more people that get into these treasury bonds, the lower the yields get because there's more people in it to the point where this becomes inefficient and people aren't making as much money. And so what people do is they move their money back into these higher risk things causing this cycle to continue to fluctuate and happen. That process takes a really long time and that's what usually happens during the recession. Everything starts dropping, people stop spending money and putting their money into safer things like treasury bonds until that's no longer efficient for them. But by that time, we've already hit the bottom of the market and it's starting to come up and people are seeing that in these higher risk things. So they start throwing their money into this, causing the market to push up more. While that's all happening, interest rates also play a role in this because if banks are lending out money, at extremely low interest rates, people will borrow money at those low interest rates and invest in something that has a higher return. So if you borrow money at 3% and the thing that you borrowed money for is making 11%, you got yourself a money factory. But with the Fed planning to raise rates soon, people are gonna be borrowing less money. And another factor of this whole recession, bearish, you know, crazy market is gonna be the gas prices because as gas prices increase, people are gonna start spending less money in the economy buying things because they need to have their money for gasoline as well as utility costs. All of those infrastructure costs of your personal life start going up, so you have to stop spending so much money here. The less spending that happens in the global economy also causes that market to go down. So you can see this cascading effect is caused not only by the fear, but of the stock prices going down, of the oil prices going up, of utility costs going up, of inflation and costs of bread and milk and cheese going up. All of that plays into effect until it gets to a certain point that it just stops, which usually takes like three to four months. And then the market starts to swing up because people have found that new balance, that new support level, and then they start warming back up to spending Gas prices start going down. They can spend more money on shoes and injecting money into the economy. And that's why it continues to go up. That's why the stimulus from the US government worked so well because people were spending less, but because they got free money, they kept spending more, keeping the economy growing. So what's the light at the end of the tunnel? Well, market's been dropping. Should you invest right now in high risk things? Probably not. Will this last forever? Definitely no. But what you'll start seeing is market sentiment shifting. At that point, the market starts improving and the economy goes on its bull run, which usually lasts about 10 years. So after the market sentiment returns to positive, we're good to go. Understanding market sentiment is extremely important, but it is not the only aspect of day trading properly and profitably. If you want the other half of this equation, you need to understand technical analysis and how the markets move and market structure. You can learn that information by watching this video right here. And if you got some value out of this video and you like the way that I teach, make sure you're dropping a like for the algorithm and my self-esteem. And we will see you in the next video.